Hello guys. Today we're going to talk about a military push-up pole antenna system. Now, one of the things that uh, we've uh, had issues with out here in the woods is uh, getting an antenna up in the air. Now, we were using uh, trees uh, and a bit of bank line and throwing it up over a branch. But, you know, some of our campsites, the, the trees, as they age, the tree branches come down and, and it just gets hard to, to, to get the line up there and takes forever. And uh, I wanted to do more than just one antenna up in the air at a time. So I thought, well, maybe if I put a mast up. You know, we'd uh, be able to get some antennas up in the air and be able to do some more stuff. So I uh, ordered a... Uh, bunch of these military uh, mass poles which are designed you know for their original military purpose to hold up camo netting and these are real commonly used in the amateur radio community to make towers you know in a, in a pinch you know on the cheap so I got about six of them well, actually I had to order eight of them but I only needed six for this and uh, I got a uh, antenna mass base which is a little plate with a little spike that goes in the ground and has a, an angle thing, you mount that. And I uh, mounted a, uh, a crossbar at, the very, at, a, at, at one of the poles, so I can put a crossbar at the top. And on that crossbar, I could mount an antenna on either side, you know, UHF or VHF antenna or, or whatever. Uh, or disc cone, maybe. And I can also uh, mount um, a uh, antenna that hangs off of it, say like uh, the T2FD that I have up there, or a dipole, or a uh, or any kind of antenna, you know, wire antenna that would go off to either side or at an angle or what have you. Basically, um, you know, we'll show some footage of the, uh, you know, what it looks like up at the top and what type of antennas that we have up there. Currently, we have a uh, HD TV antenna, which I have hooked to a television so that I can uh, watch the local news during inclement weather because when it rains out here it's nice to get a get a you know a weather radar from the local TV station um, I have a T2FD up there which is a terminated folded dipole with two elements meaning that there's two wires uh, in a loop that are uh, gonna go to a ball and then a terminating resistor I have a tri-band, uh, two meter, uh, two, uh, two meter band, 20, uh, 220 band, and seven centimeter band, or 440 as some people call it, and 10 up there. And I also have space I can put a, uh, a disc cone in the middle, should I want to, and do a real, real wide band receive. Um, I had intended to put one up there, but, uh, I, and I had ordered one and uh, ended up uh, having a shipping problem and didn't get it. So, but I did get my money back. So I'll be ordering another one from a different supplier and see if I get it. And there's a Cat5, I mean not Cat5, but a coax cable run up to the antennas. And down here at the base, I have a grounding block. Which has some lightning arresters. And the lightning arresters go to... And all this is aluminum, by the way, except for the lightning arresters themselves. They make these out of steel. But this is all aluminum. The wire's aluminum. 
um, and plus the connector blocks aluminum. Uh, but this is a uh, electric fence wire, 14 gauge. And these go to aluminum rods that are stuck in the ground every six feet. And when uh, put out, they're equal to a single 10-foot uh, ground rod. The reason we use the short ones because they're easier to pack and, and, and put out and easier to get up because uh, it's really hard to pull a 10-foot ground rod out of the ground and get a 10-foot ground rod into the ground. Also, I have these... Uh, why the wires here coiled for a reason not just to take up space but also to act as chokes um these act as order as a noise filter and it's always good to uh if you got a few extra feet on on a cable to uh wrap it up a couple turns to create this uh, choke balling effect now i plan on getting some uh proper choke balls for this which is a toroids in a box that you know you can hook up. Um, in fact, I probably would actually have a cable made where I put the uh, toroids on the cable, take some shrink wrap, put those over it, and then put it re put it put a new end on there. And that way, I don't have to uh, just you know connect anything or anything. It's built into the cable. Um, but that's a good way to do it. Um, also at the top, we have a pulley mounted to the crossbar, which the HF antenna goes on. And I have some uh, cord here that I can lower and raise the antenna and switch antennas out should I need to if I want to use a different HF antenna. On all four sides of the, of the mast, I have guy lines. And the guy lines are made of uh, Dyneema cord, and they go to some screw anchors that screw into the ground and give a good anchor point for the lines. So the antenna won't go anywhere and stays up. It's got it on all four sides. And uh, I have some standard coax run. goes back to my uh, my tent where I have my radio set up and my battery and all that stuff. And uh, that allows me to operate out of the rain. And uh, it should lightning strike this and come down the cables. It will hit these, uh, these blocks and ground out and blow the little uh, fuse thingies in here. And uh, the only path to ground that it will have is this cable right here and the spike in the... Uh, and the pole, and it should prevent any lightning from going to my equipment uh, or to me and causing me any harm. And a lot of people don't operate with this kind of stuff. I prefer to for safety reasons. Um, last thing I want to do is uh, get zapped when, or uh, destroy my radio equipment. But anyway, um, this all packs down, fits in a bag. Each one of these segments is four feet long, and they all come apart in four foot sections, and you can stick them in the pole bag, and everything, all the gear and the mount and everything all fits in the bag. The only exception is, is the crossbar, because it's six feet. It's a little bit longer than the bag, but I just strapped that to the roof rack where I, when I strapped the uh, bag to the roof rack. But uh, other than that, everything uh, packs down completely and fits in that bag. And it's man portable. Um, it's not backpack portable, but it's man portable. A single person can carry the bag and, and a single person can uh, set this up and deploy it. Um, these are good for, uh, f amateur radio field days. You know, um, if you have a setup like this, you can, you can do quite a lot for field day. It's great for base camp, you know, where you need an antenna up in the air and you've got people hiking around with HTs and if you're doing search and rescue you can set up one of these in a hurry and you know have it with a base camp and you know you can set up a repeater you know a temporary repeater system on one of these um, 
And it's just a nice piece of uh, gear to have if you're doing amateur radio or, you know, or doing uh, emergency radio services through the amateur radio program, uh, like, like Aries. Um, you know, like in a hurricane or something, you can set up uh, an antenna at a, at a Red Cross or uh, Salvation Army uh, support location, you know, if you're assisting them with radio traffic. You know, so it's, it's just a good system overall. It's, it's inexpensive to make something like this. You know, it probably costs a couple hundred bucks to put together. You know, the poles were like uh, 60, 70 bucks. You know, your ground block stuff. Well, this this gets kind of expensive on these because these are like 20 bucks a piece. You know, some of these brackets were 14 bucks, but you know, it, and it adds up. But you're probably going to spend about 500 bucks in total to put one of these together, you know, to make it fully, flat, you know, with maximum flexibility. You can also get more poles than I have here. I only have six poles. You can do more than that if you're willing to tie more guidelines and spread, and you have space from, for the guidelines to be sp further spread away from the center. Uh, I've heard of people doing, uh, you know, 50 foot pole mast with these. Uh, I wouldn't do anything more than that because it can, becomes a little bit difficult to deploy with one person. You probably need two people if you're doing a 50 foot mast. You know, and there's, you may not want to use Dyneema. You can also buy, uh, Dacron rope, which works as well. Uh, some people prefer that. But anyway, if you like what you see and have any questions, uh, you know, leave, leave a comment. We'll discuss, discuss further what you, you know, your opinions on it or if you have any questions. Also, you know, like the video, uh, click that like button. Uh, subscribe to our channel because we we don't make a lot of ham videos, but we try to make them regularly. Um, and, uh, you know, our videos are about getting into the outdoors and doing stuff. And amateur radio is a good place to get out, you know, good excuse to get out in the woods. The noise floor out here is wonderful. There is no noise out here. Whereas if you're in town... You know, you've got all that, all those power lines and, uh, and Chinese made, uh, transformers that are leaking RF everywhere and it's hard to get here anybody. We're out here. Oh, it's great. It's wonderful. Anyway, thank you and, uh, see you next time. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, click subscribe. You can also click on the bell icon receive notifications when we upload new videos. If you have questions or suggestions for new videos, please leave a comment down below. You can also consider supporting us on Patreon, and or you can join us on our Discord server. The links will be in the description below.